Hi, I'm C. Amaro. Uh, for today's video, I'm going to cover three more tips on how to see like an artist that I think will help you with your photography, whether you're shooting with a cell phone or a DSLR or point and shoot, really any kind of camera, because it's really not about the camera. It's really about how you see. Uh, just like with an artist, it's really now not about the artist's paints or their brushes. Uh, if it's a writer, it's not about what word processing program he or she uses. It's really about the mind. So that's what we're going to cover today. Now, you might be joining for the first time. So if so, uh, there are two prior videos that also cover some other tips that you should check out. And I guess you should know that my name is C. Amaro. I'm a, a nationally exhibited artist. I'm a published author and teacher. And I'm also the virtual artist in residence at Morristown National Historical Park. Uh, it's virtual because I usually present these programs in a public setting, but due to the pandemic, we're broadcasting them via video uh, to keep it nice and safe for everybody. I'm actually at Morristown National Historical Park right now in an area known as Jockey Hollow. And if you don't know, Jockey Hollow is actually the site where George Washington's troops were encamped uh, during one of the very bitter winters of the Revolutionary War. Uh, I photographed uh, some of the key features of Jockey Hollow pursuant to a commission from the National Park Service. And some of those photos are actually on display uh, as part of an exhibit at the Jockey Hollow Visitor Center. Uh, that exhibit is from June 6th till July 31st. And so I, I hope you'll check it out. Uh, you'll see the pictures. They're mounted on the windows facing outward, so it's nice and safe for people to view them from outdoors. Uh, so do check that out. Check out the other videos that I mentioned. There's also another video that will be coming out that presents an overview of my fine art photography, not just with Morristown National Historical Park, but also with many other parks. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But for today's video, I want to get to these three tips because I think they'll really help you out a lot. Uh, to do that, we're going to cut away to my uh, photography studio. We're going to get behind my computer and this way I can show you some, uh, some images on the screen to demonstrate the principles that I'll be covering. So let's head on over there. A very popular subject in photography that you'll see online and elsewhere are images of sunsets and also flowers. Uh, and I guess it's no surprise because these are subjects that are inherently colorful and we're drawn to color. We love that. But sometimes um, sometimes we don't see as much color as we would like. You know, we might be in, a, in an area that's, or like a landscape area or in a place where the color is kind of drab looking and just uninteresting. And so then we don't take any photographs. But uh, that's why tip number one is going to be to look for color. Not just be aware of color, but to actively seek it out and look for it. Because it's there, but sometimes it just requires a little work on our part to, you know, to find it. A uh, perfect example is when I did the photography at Jockey Hollow. Uh, at the time of year that I was photographing, it was pretty monochromatic. You know, there were a lot of browns, a lot of earth tones. Uh, even on this particular day when I took this photograph, uh, I kind of lucked out in the sense it was very... Um, very clear day so we had at least a nice blue sky with some puffy white crowds, uh, clouds but there were other days when I was there when it was kind of overcast and it just didn't make for um, as interesting a photo as I would have liked. So you have to kind of actively look for color. Uh, as I did engage in uh, seeking out something of color I did notice that uh, on the wood of the cabins that there are patches like what you see here in this image where it's kind of uh, it's a brown but there's a, a richness to it there's some uh, there's some reds in it it partially had to do with the time of day uh, we were approaching what we sometimes call the golden hour which is when the sun is starting to set and you're starting to get uh, kind of a warm glow you'll, you'll see that oftentimes in photographs of models on the beach for instance because it's very um, it's a very um, flattering color, I guess, is what I'm looking for. So what it did was it kind of brought out some of the browns and the reds and, and, and some of these colors in the wood. And so that uh, made for a, a good image. And it wasn't everywhere in the cabin, but it was in this area. And I kind of decided to do a close-up because I also like the shape of the, um, of the logs that were protruding outwards. So you sometimes have to really look hard for it. You wouldn't think 
of seeing oranges and reds and, and warm colors like that in, in a cabin or in a hut, as they called it. Uh, but it's there if you seek it out, and that can make for an interesting image. In fact, I kind of like the fact that it's very colorful on this side here on the left, and then you kind of get the drabber color here off to the right. Uh, here's an example, too, with the Wick House. I think I've shown this in a previous video. The Wick House is, uh, does have some color to it. You can see it here in the shutters, the reds there. Uh, even the door has a little bit of color to it. And again, fortunately, it was a very nice, cheery, sunshiny day, as I talked about in the previous video, where we had some blue. But uh, again, if you kind of hunt around, you can uh, create these contrasts or these juxtapositions where the color really starts to pop and makes more of a statement. Uh, so here's an example by zeroing in on a corner of the shutter. Uh, we have a bolder looking photograph because we have this drabber color off to the left and even down the bottom. But then you have this nice rich red set off against this black bracket over here. So you kind of have to look for it, but then by looking for it and limiting yourself, uh, you can create a more interesting picture because you can still have a photo like this of the entire house to represent it, but then you can zero in on a detail and have that color um, you know, really speak volumes. This is a photograph that I took at Jockey Hollow in the visitor center, which is currently closed, but eventually when it reopens, you can go back in there and you'll see that there is a uh, display in the visitor center that shows you what the inside of the soldiers' huts you know, would have looked like back in their time. So they have, um, you know, different clothing and, and different uh, implements kind of laid out inside. And quite frankly, it's pretty drab also. It's it's kind of all monochromatic, tends to be a lot of browns and, and colors of that nature. But I did notice that there was this um, jacket, kind of like what you've seen me wear, with that nice bold red. Again, it's that red color. And uh, I did advise in a previous video about zooming with your feet to get close. This was a situation where I could not do that because it's a display and it, there's a barrier to getting any closer. So in this instance, I did zoom in with my lens. And again, by zooming in, I was able to draw attention to that nice rich red band, which really stands out in contrast to the navy blue on the left and also kind of the warmer uh, orange palette, kind of the earth tones that kind of surround it. So again, you kind of have to hunt for it, but by looking for color, what happens is you make color sort of the star of the show of your photograph. Outdoors, I had a similar situation. Uh, lots of This is uh, one of the trails within Jockey Hollow. There are many of them, and they're, they're very nice to walk through. And so there were a lot of greens, uh, and some colors like this here, which is again, you know, more of a brown earthy tone. So sometimes it could be, um, you know, a little bit of a challenge to photograph something that's a little bolder. But you might recall from my previous uh, video, I talked about the element of light, right? So if you're aware of light, that can also bring you into the element of color. Because again, all these elements, uh, line, light, and we were talking about color now, they're all ultimately interrelated. So uh, I found this uh, image here, or, or this, um, this scene, where there was a nice, bright uh, backlighting going on. And it kind of highlighted more the yellows and the lime greens, and those colors against the warmer earth tones of the, um, of, of the tree you know, really created a nice contrast. Uh, you'll notice too many times in these pictures that what's happening is I'm also zeroing in or taking close-ups. And that's a, another thing I want to point out. Many people, when they take photographs, uh, there is a tendency to be far away from the subject. And there's a, um, I guess, kind of a saying within the photography world to get closer or you're not being close enough. And being closer can create a very different image. Even if you're photographing a friend of yours, let's say, uh, you might uh, photograph them, um, you know, full body, but consider getting closer, you know, really getting tight on the face. That can make a much more interesting photograph where uh, more of their character 
is being revealed. And likewise here, more the character of the um, of this uh, tree here, this uh, kind of rotted tree, uh, more of the character, I think, is being revealed here in this close-up shot. Another thing to consider is to look for mass and space. These are two separate elements, but I like speaking about them as a team or as a, as a group because they're very interrelated. And sometimes it can be hard to understand what mass is without understanding what space is and vice versa. So uh, tips number two and three is to look for mass and space. And the best way to explain it is with, with this illustration that I created. Um, if you look at it, uh, ask yourself what you see. You might see one particular thing. Uh, you might see two things. Uh, some folks will tell me that they see a vase or a cup of some type in the center. If so, if that's what, you, if that's what jumps out at you, then what that means is that this white area is the mass, okay? It's the, it's the subject that has the most weight. And this darker area here on the side is what's called negative space. On the other hand, if what you see are two faces looking at each other, kind of look almost like Alfred Hitchcock, then, then the black area is actually the mass or the part that has the weight, and the white area becomes a negative space, kind of like the background. And you might even flip back and forth and, and see both, which is good. But that's an illustration of what mass means in relation to space and vice versa. And by being aware of mass and space, you can use that to your advantage, too, in your, in your photographs. Uh, this picture we were uh, just looking at, uh, even though I was focusing on color, right, uh, there's also an element of mass and space because the mass here is this uh, woody area. And the negative space would be the background. And what that does is it creates a shape, right? This kind of jagged shape here, up and down, almost like they're, um, almost like they're mountains. Uh, and then you can also see here there's an element of line, right? It's a very vertical shot, uh, line, uh, light, right? We have this very light background and, and this darker foreground. So that's line, light, color, right? We talked about that already. Uh, mass and space. So that's an example of how all these elements work together to create a composition that maybe you wouldn't have taken otherwise. Um, same thing here. Uh, here this is a wider shot, but this would represent the mass, the part that has the most weight. And this area here, even though it is cluttered with different subjects, being the trees, it's really the negative space, and that's something else to consider. Many times when folks are photographing a subject, they'll place this subject dead center. And there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, there is a little bit more interest when uh, the subject is off to the side a little bit. You might have heard in photography what's called the rule of thirds, and I don't really like the word rules. I think rules are made to be broken sometimes, so I'm going to use the phrase suggestion of thirds. But the idea behind it is you divide your, uh, your image into thirds. And then what you do is you place your subject you know, somewhere off to the, the final third or maybe between the last two thirds. And this is a concept that actually goes back to painting. Uh, French Impressionism uh, will often have the subject kind of off to the side. And it's not original to French Impressionism. Uh, Impressionism. They actually got the idea from Japanese art where the subject is often off to the side. So uh, those are some great artists to model your photography after. This is another example where the negative space is this area over here. And then the subject, which has the most weight, is off to, to the left here. All right, but it, it just gives you a different uh, experience of the image uh, than if you had placed it dead center. Sometimes things are appropriate to place dead center, and they look best to there. But oftentimes, uh, it's more interesting this way. What it does, if you might recall from my video about lines, about giving you a sense of depth, right? A uh, uh, three-dimensionality to a two-dimensional picture and kind of a path to follow. You kind of have that going on here by having the, um, the cabin off to the left. This kind of becomes your, your path kind of going out into the horizon. So consider that with your images. Consider line, light, 
color, mass, and space because when you put them all together, that's what composition is all about. You can focus on one specifically if you want to, like line, so your, your image can be mostly about that, but um, most of the time you're going to see that light, color, mass, and space are involved in there too. Your photo can be also color uh, oriented, but again, there might be elements of line and light, or it could be some combination of these things. It's almost like, um, as I've mentioned in another video, it's, it's kind of like the notes in music. You know, you might have a particular note that is dominant in your theme uh, of, of the song, but that doesn't mean that there's an absence of the other notes as well. So this is kind of the notes you want to play with and the combination. And by playing with these combinations, that's how you start coming closer to achieving photographs that are a little bit more creative, kind of different, more unique to the way you're seeing, and therefore more individual. And that's what separates it from a lot of the images that we see that kind of look the same after a while. And there you go. Three elements that I think will really help you out with your photography. In fact, I know it will because I actually use these myself. So for these three, it's color. You want to think about color as an element. And then there's two more, but they kind of go together. It's mass and space. And if you watch the previous video, you'll see that the other uh, elements are line and light. So all together to conclude, it's line, light, color, mass, and space. And then don't forget from the very first video, you want to be aware, uh, you want to be aware of your technique. So you want to make sure your lens is clear, right? That you have a, a lot of stability, either in your positioning or with your tripod. Uh, and you check all these videos, you put it together. I think you're going to see that your photos are going to improve pretty dramatically. And you'll also have images that are very unique to you because you'd be looking for things that maybe other folks are not looking for. So that's it, that wraps up this workshop. I, would, I hope that next year we can do this again, but do it in a live setting where I can go a little bit more deeper into these things. And I can actually take you on a photo walk where we can kind of explore these ideas hands on. But until then, check out these videos. I hope you'll uh, share these with your friends. If you're viewing this on a platform that enables you to click a like button or to uh, type in a comment, uh, please do that, I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't done so already, please come out to Jockey Hollow, Morristown National Historical Park. Uh, do check out the exhibit that I have on display at the Visitor Center, which is there from June 6th to July 31st, 2021. Uh, also check out my other video that'll be coming out, if it hasn't already, that presents an overview of all my fine artwork with Morristown, as well as other national parks around the country. And I guess other than that, um, as you may know by now, I am Sia Maro, and on behalf of Morristown National Historical Park and myself, we invite you to check out the park's website for more information about these programs. And also check out my website, which is www.siomaro.com. That's Siomaro with an X, not an S. X I O. M -A -R -O com, And there you'll find more information uh, about my work with the parks. You can also get a free print uh, from the Morristown collection that I'll be happy to send you and you can get information about my books. Uh, so do check it out. Uh, National Parks is one of the greatest resources uh, that America has and we should take full advantage of them by visiting them. So there you go. Until next time, I'll see you around.